Flights disrupted at Murtala Mohammed Airport, Lagos Terminal. Reservation workers protest the sack of some of their colleagues. Also on the breakfast, the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association supports fuel subsidy removal as planned by the federal government. Our discussions and all these ahead and also don't forget we'll be going through today's national dailies, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Very good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios right here uh, on Victoria Island, Lagos. And uh, it's a pleasure to be back. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Ibupo. It's good to be back on your screen. All right, as usual, we'll start off uh, our discussions this morning with um, a look at the trending uh, stories. And uh, don't forget, we have, like we said earlier, advertised uh, discussions on fuel subsidy as well as uh, um, uh, the aviation strike. But let's start off with a trending story. Uh, Mercy, <laughs> uh, this is a really sad one, but I think, I think um, I would have loved us to start with the one that is, uh, was happened close by. No. Yes, I think that is, that is where we should start off from. Um, yesterday, there was a, a massive fire outbreak somewhere near, nearby. Um, Adela Odeco Street is not far from, uh, from us. Um, right here in Victoria Island, Lagos. Uh, uh, first, the first story or first news I had was that uh, a Mikano building was on fire. And so I rushed to the internet to look at it, to try and get the information, to try and scar for, you know, sometimes how it's, it is, when you hear a story, you have to really dig deep to be sure uh, of what's happening. And it turned out that there was no Mikano building on fire. If I won, paper also said it was a, uh, Providence Bank headquarters. It turned out it wasn't no Providence Bank headquarters that was on fire. It wasn't actually a, 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 a Mikano building that was on fire as well. In fact, some people say insinuating things. It was um, a Providence Bank branch that was under construction at, at um, Adela Odeco Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. Um, we're hearing so far that one person uh, is feared dead. Initial report said several people were feared dead. Another report said four people were feared dead. Now they've been able to put out the real situation, which is one person feared dead. Uh, he's said to be a yet to be identified middle-aged man. Uh, he was burned to death, a uh, very sad one in that fire incident. Uh, and um, for, some, uh, for some persons who are still saying it's the Providence Bank uh, headquarters, it is not the Providence Bank headquarters from um, the Providence Bank website, it, their headquarters is on Ade Tokumbo Ademola uh, Street, which is just near the Eco Hotel Roundabout. This particular uh, uh, building is still under construction. In fact, the uh, generating plant that they installed there um, is, is said to have been just newly installed and they're working on it. They've not even commissioned it. Uh, one person dead, an unspecified number of people reportedly injured. Uh, the fire was said to have emanated from the premises of the bank while a repair work was being carried out on its generating. It's not a repair work. They were trying to make sure it fix it, I think, put it in place so that they could launch that, uh, uh, that branch. Um, from the videos, you know, eyewitness accounts and eyewitness videos, you can see that a vehicle belonging to uh, up the police, a legal state, a rapid response squad, was also on fire uh, right there. Uh, it was an explosion. The police public relations officer, Benjamin Houdini, confirmed the incident. He said the fire started with the bank premises on Tuesday morning. A vehicle got burnt. Our officers were not affected, but they were injured. Some of them went to hospital, police officers. Uh, one person died, others were injured. The injured persons have been hospitalized. Uh, it, it really was um, unexpected. Uh, some person on Twitter was claiming uh, that uh, it took at least 30 minutes for the fire service personnel to arrive there. And of course, people jumped on the bandwagon to attack the fire service for not coming on time. But another person who claims to know uh, someone who works in the bank, or with the bank rather, said that uh, the person told her that if not for the fire service, it would have been worse. So I think um, uh, we don't know too much about the situation. 
The information out there is not too clear, but it is a Providence Bank uh, branch under construction. Uh, they were installing the plant as a generating plant, and there was an explosion there that led to this, this incident. It's really sad uh, what has happened. Really sad. Mercy, over to you. Well, so uh, I, I, we know that the, there's a lot of conspiracy theories or, you know, speculations and put out. People are beginning to think otherwise, but we're waiting and very hopeful that there will be an investigation carried out as to what, you know, is the cost of the fire, what actually cost the fire. But every other time, one of the things that we should pay attention to is the issue of, you know, education and sensitization every other time about fire, how to handle fire, and how to even avoid it. Because if we get to a point where we understand how to manage all of these issues, and then we'll not even get to a point where, you know, there's an explosion and what have you. So, yes, it's over to the relevant quarters. Uh, we want to know exactly what transpired uh, with that, uh, you know, fire incident. Just not the same also. I mean, just yesterday, uh, hours after that, there was also another fire incident you know, in other parts of Lagos. And um, uh, like I rightly mentioned, we need to be in the know, this need for orientation, information, and what have you. We, we need to understand what to do so we don't get to the point where there's an outbreak, right, with markets and all of that. I really don't know how the Ministry of Information Orientation and every other agency, including the fire service or firefighters, as some people would actually put it, but we need to get to a point where we're able to, you know, put out enough information, educate the people on how to advert, avert, you know, all of this mishap uh, so we can be on the other side. But however, um, it's very saddening. It's unfortunate. It feels like yesterday a lot of things happened in the country. In, indeed, um, you're right. Uh, talking about the Tejo Show market fire, you know, I mean, people had barely got into have a hang of what happened at, uh, hey, at uh, Adeola Odeku yesterday uh, when another fire you know, erupted at, uh, that, that, that uh, engulfed goods worth millions of naira, destroying those goods, uh, goods worth millions of naira destroyed. Uh, Tejo Osho Market is in the Yaba axis of Lagos State and uh, uh, that fire broke out at the popular Taylor Market behind the ultra-modern Tejo Show Market. Uh, we all know everywhere there as Tejo Show Market. But the fire happened at the popular Taylor Market behind the ultra modern Tejo Show Market. Um, the director of the Lagos State Fire Service and Rescue Service, or Lagos State Fire and Rescue Service, uh, Adeshe Margaret, confirmed that incident. So it's, uh, um, it's fire upon fire. Um, you know, there, there's several firefighting stations in this axis. Um, there's one. Uh, I think around, I think like two off our lower road. There's a State House, it's called State House Fire Service um, Station on Ribado Road, off our lower road. There's another one. I, I do not know if it's uh, their office or it's a station, but it's uh, near, I think near EFCC or something like that on uh, our lower road. There's another fire service station. You have Marocco Fire Service Station just nearby. Uh, you have one at Chevron. Um, sure, Mercy, if I'm with that one. And there are a couple of others nearby. On, there's one at Onikon. Okay, two. Sorry, two at Onikon. Uh, one is federal, one is state. So there are a number of fire service um, stations on the island, you know. And uh, if something like this happens in, in, in VI, it shouldn't take too long to have these guys there. Um, what we do not know if it's the fire service people were able to act, you know, to avert the damage that would, had already that was recorded. Uh, if they could have acted faster, we don't know. But uh, sometimes these things you can't you can't do you know much than to work to to stop to stop it from spreading to the next building. I'm told there's a global com office or building next next door um, that could have also been damaged if this fire was not put out. So maybe we we'll take the words of somebody who says she knows someone <laughs> who works in Providence Bank uh, who says that they actually helped salvage the situation. Uh, sometimes look at the traffic, you know, 30 minutes from wherever they came from may not have been uh, too late. I don't know. Lagos State Government recently launched about 65 uh, firefighting vehicles. I do not know if they're still parked somewhere waiting to be distributed uh, or they've already been distributed. But hopefully we'll have a quicker response next time. Let's move on.
Well, uh, quickly, I mean, there's a tweet that a uh, very popular Nigerian comedian uh, tweeted. Uh, so that has gotten a lot of Nigerians talking uh, about what he tweeted, the content of his tweets, talking about macaroni. And we know that Mr. Macaroni has been uh, on the front burner for a lot of issues, issues of, you yeah. know, the NSAS, mm -hmm. or the forefront agitating and what have you. He's been very vocal, very popular with all of that. So um, he so he put out that, this particular tweet and he talked about you know the current reality of the nation where uh, whatever it is that happens you have the elites because this has always been an issue so you, the society would be divided you know towards the haves and or the haves not and and that's what exactly has always been from time immemorial and in his tweet uh, which got people talking uh, drew people to the current reality of you know, the country, and uh, Macaroni had said that, which also ma ma made it look like, you know, a lot of Nigerians took to social media to kick off the campaign. So uh, I'd like to read uh, the tweet of Macaroni, the way, you know, he put it, and that has drawn the attention of the people to the realities of life between the Nigerian politicians and citizens. As the president, oh, of course, President Mohamed Buhari, flew out of the country for medical checkup. So in, in all of that, um, several highlight. He urged Nigerians to vote wisely. That was the peak of everything that he said. And the tweet read, uh, or the tweet was written as this, uh, no matter how hungry the people are, there's always food in Asurok. No matter how sick the people get, uh, politicians jet out to London for treatment. No matter the level of insecurity the people face, the politicians are well protected, so vote wisely. And a lot of reaction, you know, has been uh, generated. Nigerians fumed as they started a campaign of vote wisely, you know, on Twitter and all the social media platforms. Uh, there's this particular one that says, Macaroni, increase the volume, let the educated one hear and tell the uneducated fellow 2023 is not about religion or tribe it's about nigerians surviving vote wisely and of course they you know put out their favorite or whoever they are supporting we must get this right this is also another you know tweet from a certain tweet handle cynthia for me uh the tweet is almost endless i'm sure if you go on twitter and use the hashtag uh vote wisely you would see all of the reactions from nigeria that's what it is uh, mercy, nothing much, much to add here except to say, well, I mean, uh, the young man is simply um, uh, echoing what, uh, or re-echoing what uh, people have said, and it's, it's stating the obvious, you know. Um, but um, it's good to to have, you know, people who have the uh, followership online and who have popularity, uh, you know, advise the citizens ahead of the elections. Um, he hasn't campaigned for anybody in per se or against anyone. Simply stating the obvious, you know, stating the obvious. Um, people are lining up on the streets uh, to buy fuel. You know, yesterday I sent uh, um, a domestic staff who provides security services to us at home uh, to get us uh, fuel for the uh, generating set because there was no light and uh, no power supply. And um, he couldn't get it because he, we we're not dispensing fuel into um, uh, jerry cans, I'm going to call it that. So, um, People are, are facing things. I think everybody knows <laughs> what is going on. But will will Nigerians uh, vote in a manner that shows that they want to get the best candidate who can solve the problems? Uh, are the candidates out there, you know, the ones people are talking about, the ones who have the answers, the solutions to the nation's problems? I do not know. Will anything? change come 2023 i do not know but i mean the more the merrier i mean people everyone needs to do what they can to um to you know enlighten the public to tell them you have to vote you know wisely um if you want to vote don't look at how much you're being given uh you know in terms of vote buying don't look at uh, stomach infrastructure if they're giving you you know bag of rice a uh, bag of curry don't look at that and simply just vote without you know, you know, any bias for your know, brother, where your pet person is from. If it's from your tribe or the person practices the same religion as you, that's not what you should be looking at. You should look at who is saying the right things and who has the capacity to solve the problems the country uh, is facing. So that is very important. I think uh, the young man must be commended. I saw a video he put out uh, some time ago 
I think it was on the anniversary of Ensa's uh, uh, massacre. Like he, uh, he put out a video on his, uh, Twitter and social media, you know, asking people who, you know, uh, had issues with healthcare and other things. It was a skit, you know, as a sketch, you know, to vote for who can solve the problems. And I think he's immature about it to not mention any party. Uh, that's a very mature way, very intelligent man, to not uh, mention any candidate, to not align himself with anybody but just to stick with the issues. And I think that is a, a good way to go about it. You know, uh, it's, it's, I'm not saying those who are doing, you know, coming out to say support A, B, or C are, are wrong, but I think he's also handling it professionally. So that's, that's good. I think he should continue and uh, he deserves uh, to be commended. And others who are in such uh, positions where they have popularity and uh, should, should also, you know, have some sort of social activism going on. I mean, he is arrested during the NSAS protests and all that, uh, put inside a Black Maria, as we call him here, a mobile prison, you know. So um, kudos to Mr. Macrony. But Mr. Macrony, if I call you through your manager for an interview, pick my call and answer. It, <laughs> so your you're manager should personal. stop telling me you're not available. <laughs> Please, okay? All right, let's um, quickly, I had to, had to add that. Let's quickly look at, um, you know, some people said Amechi is dead. Former Minister Michi is dead. You know, people started panicking. You know, sometimes these people should help, help, you know, so that people don't spread fake news. Because um, it's not the immediate past transportation minister. This is a, a former aviation minister uh, of many years ago. Many years ago. Um, he uh, recently led a delegation of prominent Igbo uh, leaders to President Buhari uh, to request the release of Namdi Kanu. Uh, to the team leader of the indigenous people of Biafra group. He's been talking a lot in the news, and to me it was a surprise that uh, um, uh, Chief Mbazulike Amechi uh, had died. Well, he's, a, he's an old man. He's uh, lived to a ripe old age. And uh, his family announced his death. You know, he was the first Republic Minister uh, of uh, Aviation. Uh, a statement was issued Tuesday by his family, um, signed by his eldest son. Uh, Asia now Amechi on behalf of the family, saying the elder statesman died in the early hours of the day. Uh, he's he he's been strong to the end, making statements. He's a strong man. Look at him, you know, going on Kipsi calls at ninety three years old, mm. going to see the president at ninety three years old, leading a delegation at ninety three years old, and he'd been talking on national issues at that age. Strong man, and uh, I think um, we will just. Uh, uh, Convey our condolences to the family of a uh, later uh, Chief Mbazulike Amechi. Um, our thoughts go out to you. We also take solace and uh, inspiration from the fact that Papa uh, was a very strong man who, even in his 90s, still was able to speak on national issues and was mm. agile enough to even go see the president and uh, contribute to the development uh, and the peace in his part of the country uh, by being an elder statesman to call for the release of Nam Kano and also to prefer solutions, you know, that will lead to the peace in southeastern Nigeria. Um, he lived a, a fulfilled life, like his family said, we agree, and he touched many lives uh, to the service of humanity, God, and country. May his soul rest in peace. Oh, wow. So, Mba Zulike, uh, like uh, we have rightly talked about, I mean, some of the description of what we know him for we're not really surprised because he's a nationalist and I think that Nigeria has lost, you know, a legend has lost, you know, an elder statesman because prior to this time in the 1940s, uh, we're talking about the colonial Nigeria, he was a part of the Zeke's movement, we're talking about Namdi Azikiwe movement, it was a movement that was concerned about um, you know, the struggle, the emancipation of Africans or Nigerians from the hands of the British rule or colonial masters, and that's what he was. And so he was a member, a surviving member up until the time he died. And it's really great to know that, you know, this young person, if you look at the teachings and the doctrines at the time of, you know, Namdi Azikiwe, these young persons were, you know, out there that were willing to put out their best to ensure that, uh, you know, Africa or Nigeria is liberated and then they had issues of self-governance. Africa should be controlling the affairs. This were, uh, you know, young men who were, and apart from being a nationalist, it was also a unionist. 
Um, we, we, there were several, you know, um, stands that stood him out, especially when shortly after people died, about 18 persons were killed at the time following a sit-at-home protest. He, you know, organized a certain protest for uh, those who were involved in a certain kind of crime to be prosecuted and for the rights of the railway workers or union, if you like to say. Uh, the, the story is almost endless with him, but this is, and, and that's why I'm not surprised, you know, when you talked about um, his leading delegation to the state of president, even at 93, uh, what he's done. And that's because I feel like that's been part of him. It's really, really commendable. It feels like a demigod, you know, people should probably would have worshipped and reverend him when he was still alive. But of course, we remember this. And that's, and that's why it's very significant that as we live our lives, you know, from day to day, wherever it is that we find ourselves, that we are able to impact humanity. Do you also know that, you know, the Zik movement at the time, the young people who came together, you know, came to some sort of agreement that they were not going to get married, so they took an oath that they were not going to get married until Nigeria gained her independence. And it's quite commendable. Uh, I really don't know. But of course, the likes of Macaroni Fowles and uh, others are also, you know, proving themselves to be uh, that kind of person uh, in our generation, in our current, you know, dispensation, the country. I like say, are, are you, are you uh, uh, drawing some inspiration from that? No, no, I'm just saying maybe, that. Maybe, so, so, to be very honest, wanted, it's wanted, really... Wanted to do something similar to that to say... But I'm already doing something. This yeah. is something that I'm doing. <laughs> um, we, we, don't, um, we don't have to... You, so, the thing with doing something... Celibacy, I don't know if it was celibacy or just... No, I'm, ju I'm just saying that marriage, if but, you look uh, at it's history. So, history is very important, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying... You know, when people die, most times, we're not in the culture where we get to celebrate people when they're alive. But we get to remember, you know, the lives of people and how they live their lives even when they're no longer. Mm -hmm. And so it would just be, I mean, thinking about what they did at the time, you know, the people who actually fought and who believed in a certain, you know, ideology, who thought that, you know, Nigeria needs to be emancipated or Africa needs to be yes. controlling their yes. affairs. It was really brilliant. This were Absolutely. young people who were in secondary schools who were, you know, out there, they believed a certain course, they were moving without no influence. And the issue of saying, hey, we're coming together, we're taking an oath and we're saying we're not getting married, you know, so it's personal, until, but it's until very Nigeria commendable. Until Nigeria gains independence. Yes, until Nigeria gains which independence. Is a, and so which is it a, was a, a noble cause. Yeah, yeah, it was a noble cause. And, and as much as we know that there's been uh, several faults as regards the issue of uh, Namdi Azikiwe or Zik, however you want to call it, you know, people say, oh, those who were pushing for Nigeria to control the affairs, there were a lot of loopholes and what have you. But we must really say that it was commendable. Whatever it is, all that they have done, uh, sure. it, was, it was really, really remarkable. And he's one of them. And we celebrate him and we, you know, uh, wish abso him absolutely. a peaceful rest. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also, uh, uh, I'm happy you went there, uh, a clarion call to, you know, uh, it's an example to the young people to, to take, uh, borrow and leave from the older generation, you know, to take charge and to, to see how, how they, can, they can also step in uh, to, to lead. This people started young. They started really, really young. And um, they are still doing it at the age of 93, you know, 80s and all that, where the young people, you know, you also need to step up and also be out there and put yourself in front because uh, time waits for nobody. And uh, it's, it's not uh, the norm that the older ones will be doing it all the time. Actually, you have to be start doing it when you're young. Um, uh, Chief Amishi didn't do anything wrong by stepping out. I'm sure he, he was very useful uh, to the nation, but we can learn from the fact that he studied, like Messi said, uh, at a young age, even from school, you know, to also uh, encourage our young people to step out and also be at the forefront of national issues. Well, that's uh, the size of um, our top training segment. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll dive straight into the national dailies, looking at the biggest headlines with analysis to follow. Stay with us.